Hey everyone, uh, I wanted to show you a, some cool tricks for using uh, particle systems and shaders together. Super awesome, has changed my life as far as uh, making particle systems goes. Uh, I'll just show you what I did quickly here and, uh, and then I'll show you how to do it. So using a, using a particle system, that, so this is one particle and each particle is using its own, uh, it, the particle system obviously needs a material to render. And the material that I'm using is uh, hooked to a shader that is basically doing this effect. But what's cool about it is we're taking particle system values uh, like color, and I'm also using the alpha channel of the color to uh, do some of this animation. So uh, yeah, let's uh, quickly go through how I did that. So I'm using Amplify Shader to do this. You can use Unity Shader Graph as well. It'll be almost, almost identical, almost. So I'm gonna open up a new uh, Amplify Shader project. And for this example, uh, we're gonna be using a surface shader and it's gonna be unlit. So um, first thing we're gonna wanna do is, well, you know, before we do anything, we're gonna set up the particle system. So let's just save this. I'm gonna call this, uh, I don't know, particle, no, let's go um, particle shader. Let's get you know super creative with it. Particle shader dot shader. I'm just gonna save that and let Unity do its thing. Give it one second. Okay. Okay, so before we do anything to the shader, let's create our particle system. Oh, man. All right. Uh, so we're gonna go effects, particle system, and you'll see that we have this crazy particle system happening right now. So we're just gonna dumb that down a bit just so we can get a good uh, preview of what we're doing in the shader. So let's go with, uh, let's put duration to one second. Let's make it loop. So every one second, it's gonna restart. Uh, let's go start lifetime. Uh, let's go three, start speed. Let's go 0 0.5, so it barely moves. Gotta keep an eye on it. Uh, start size, you can leave, it's fine. Um, actually, you can leave almost everything else except emission. We're gonna take down to zero and we're gonna instead at the start, make it just burst uh, one uh, particle for us. And that way we can, you know, kind of keep track of things. I mean, you can do that with rate over time as well, but this is just how I like to do things. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do um, is jump back to our shader. And uh, I'm gonna show you how this vertex stuff works. So we're gonna say vertex, um, if you type in vertex up here, you'll get uh, vertex color is what we're looking for. We're just going to plug that right into the emission and we're going to hit refresh. Now, of course, we need to make a material. So let's create a material. Let's call it uh, particle material. Again, super creative. And uh, let's go back to our particle system and under render way at the bottom, we're just going to make sure that it's actually using this material. It's kind of important. So you can see it's just a block right now, that's fine. Um, we'll get there in a sec. And then I'm just gonna close this guy, close this guy, that's my old one. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the, well, actually, um, better example. Let's go to the particle system and go way down to the bottom and now you can see the shader, or sorry, the material that is hooked to it. And we're going to change this to use our particle shader, the one that we created in Amplify. Okay, so we're gonna use that. And uh, now we're going to hit open in shader editor. And doing it this way means any changes that we make here and then after we save, it'll reflect in real time right on the uh, particle system, which is cool. So right now we're using, we have a vertex color node, we're plugging it right into emission and let's save the shader and let's see what that does. So now if I go to my start color and I change it to red, for example, you can see that every particle that spawns is now red, awesome. This is what we need to uh, jump into what we're gonna do next here. So um, we can also, we can use any of these colors. We can use RGBA. Um, there's lots of other vertex nodes you can use. I'm only gonna go through the color one right now. Uh, so let's do something cool here. Let's go, let's plug the alpha into, oh, my bad. One, one thing we gotta do is we're just gonna make this, uh, let's go down to blend mode and we're gonna change this to uh, transparent. That's right under the uh, output node uh, options here. And we're gonna go alpha, we're gonna grab that and go to opacity. So it does nothing on the surface, but if we go to 
color over light. Let's say, let's, let's do it this way. Let's go color over lifetime. And I'll move this window so you can see it. Let's say we want it to start at, let's leave it at white for now. And let's just go, let's make the alpha. Here, check that out. Cool, hey? And now let's put the alpha full here. And let's put another full one here. And then let's fade it out at the end. So you can see that now the shaders follow um, this color over time because it's using the vertex color uh, node and plugged into opacity. The alpha is plugged into opacity. Many more cool things we can do with that. And let's get to them right now. So let's plug in a, let's go, let's get a texture sample. Or let's, sorry, let's get a texture object. And let's just choose one. I, I have a bunch in here. Um, You'll probably have to find your own or, you know, if you message me, I can share these with you, whatever. Uh, let's, let's go with, uh, let's go with dust. I like the dust one. Uh, and then we're going to go texture uh, sample and we're going to plug this into here. And we're also going to get one more texture sample. Um, same thing. And we're going to plug this guy into here. Um, now you're probably thinking why two? And I'll get to that in a sec. But first, uh, let's take the R from this and plug that into opacity. My bad. Let's first go multiply, plug the R into here and plug this into here and plug this into opacity. And now we're gonna see there's a texture and the texture also fades out because uh, it's all controlled by this alpha channel here. So now let's get to, let's get to some cool stuff. Um, let's remap this. It's going to remap this guy and let's click this so we can see the preview. Let's remap it to, I don't know, minus two and plus six. And that gives us a lot more contrast, right? And whenever you're remapping outside of zero and one, what you want to do is you just want to clamp it after. And that makes it go back to zero to one, but it keeps the same, uh, I don't know, fidelity. Is that the right word? So now uh, what we want to do is, well, we can see that that's working, but we also, let's, we want one more remap here. Okay, so let's remap this and let's clamp it again, of course. Of course, uh, we can get rid of this preview. We already know what that looks like. And then we're gonna multiply these together. And right now that's not gonna make a difference because they're at the exact same uh, they're basically the exact same image, right? So all that's going to do is it's going to up the contrast even more because it's multiplying by itself. Um, but we're going to pan these eventually. We're going to pan them all both differently, and then it's going to create a cool effect. Uh, but the other thing we need is we need to surround it with uh, a fading out opacity. I like to use sphere, uh, not a sphere, a circle for that. Uh, the easiest way to make a circle um, with math is to get a UV map, and then we're going to remap it. And then we're going to say, we're going to take the length of it. So we're going to say UV into here. We're going to remap this from 0, 0, 1, 1 to negative 1 and 1, 1, just like that. And we're going to push that into here. And you'll see that it creates a kind of fading out circle. But we want it the opposite. So we're going to go 1 minus. And we are going to get the exact opposite of that. And we're going to multiply that into this guy right here. And already we're getting some, you know, like, a, you know, kind of a softer fade out on the edges, which is super important. Uh, visually, it just looks a lot better. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, kind of the final thing actually, is we are going to grab UV coordinates. We are going to pan them. You can also rotate them too, but I, I prefer panning a lot of the time. And we're going to pan this guy, and then we're gonna copy this. Actually, we can just copy this one. And we're going to pan this. And then we obviously just have to set the pan values. So uh, point, let's say we wanna go uh, point one on the X, actually point zero five on the X, and we'll go point zero two on the Y. Eh, let's go a little further. Let's go point one on the Y. Uh, we can see how that's panning already, perfect. And then we're gonna do, we'll set this one a little different. Let's go negative 0 0.05 and let's go with, um, let's go with 
eight on the Y. There you go. Cool, hey? Oh, there's one thing we missed, and I'll show you what that is. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remap this alpha output. Okay, and we're going to throw this into the max value of both of these things, okay? And what's gonna happen uh, is, so the alpha, as you know, goes from zero to one, right? And the way we're doing it goes zero to one and then one to zero at the end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remap zero to one on this remap, and we're going to remap that from uh, zero to, let's say six. I believe that's around what it was using. Somewhere like that anyway. And yeah, pl if you plug them both into here, they basically take over for that. Remember we had a negative six, or sorry, pl positive six as the value here. Now it goes from positive six to zero over time or however we want. So what we can do is we can change this fade to be something more like this. Cool, hey? Eh? And there you go. Pretty easy stuff. Have fun with that. There's tons of options um, as far as vertex data goes uh, with particle effects. And of course we can, uh, you know, we can get crazy with this and we can, you know, create 10 every time or something. You can create some pretty cool like dust and, and explosion type effects. Obviously you want some randomness to this. You want like a, maybe a start rotation, uh, random between two continent, uh, cons constants, let's go 0, 180, and they'll all start a little random. And you've got this cool effect that looks generated. Well, it is generated, but it looks like it's different every time. Pretty, pretty cool. And it looks animated. It looks way better than just a static particle that just disappears, right? And uh, one of my other things, uh, favorite things to do is the size over lifetime. I really like using size over lifetime. Um, I usually start with a graph that looks something like this for size over lifetime. Um, and actually, since we're fading it out, we don't need it to shrink at the end, but you know, something like this is really powerful. Um, it gives that kind of like, like you know, start small and grow into it as uh, time goes on. And you can see, like how awesome is that? So enjoy that tip and uh, I'll talk to you later.